Okay, this first statement is from courtesy of Brother Luke, and uh, I had to uh, uh, abridge it uh, to fit it so that we could uh, actually fit it on the screen and put it in YouTube chat. Uh, so uh, feel free to add to anything to it, Luke, but uh, it is true or false. Whenever I disagree with someone on non-essentials, I always go out of my way to express my disagreement with the utmost respect. And then uh, Luke references 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 15. And if you want, I can read that. Uh, let me pull that up here. You're muted. Luke, you I want to say that. something? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it if you would read that. Okay, uh, so 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Yes. Now, meekness and fear, um, I, I think that the, uh, the words that I would use to uh, give us a more modern-day understanding of, of that is um, with... Uh, uh, let's say with with gentleness um and re and respect um so that's the question uh so would you read the, read the question one more time and i, yes. I don't see it in yeah, yeah did I'm, you, putting did it, you put I'm putting it in putting a chat right oh. now um okay true or false whenever i disagree with someone on non-essentials i always go out of my way to express my disagreement with the utmost respect okay all right please everybody answer that and uh let me see i guess i have to go last so uh, sister heather what do you say um i say false because well mainly because like brother luke likes to say always and never are our words that kind of i don't i don't really go with those um but because of that, I would say false. Um, I don't always uh, express my feelings when I disagree on a non-essential. Um, I will definitely ask more questions and try and feel the person out and see why they believe what they believe. And, and I will try and um, understand their point of view. Um, but I've learned that the best way to learn is to is to listen more than I talk. So if I don't agree with something, doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not right. I'm I still consider myself to be a babe in Christ, so I'm still learning. Um so no, I, I will give my opinion sometimes, most of the time, but I don't give a um a rebuttal of why I think that they are wrong, even if it is respectful. Mm hmm. Well, okay. Thank you. Let, let me first uh, respond to uh, the chat room. We got uh, R. Gray wrote, uh, I have never been here and hung out. I was shocked when I got a notification. This is so cozy. All right, R. Gray, welcome. Glad you are here with us tonight and hopefully you enjoy it and want to come uh, come back. Uh, he got an, uh, R. Gray got a notification. I guess he must have clicked that notification bell next to subscribe. I hope everybody will do that if you haven't already done it. Okay, Ben, well, how do you answer the question? Well, I would agree with R. Gray. I, oh, wait, 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 ben, I'm sorry, be, before you answer, I, uh, Angel has, has come now. So why don't you okay. uh, restate the question, then let's let Angel, uh, before you answer, Ben, uh, let's let Angel oh, say hello to everybody. Okay. Hey guys, sorry, sorry about that. I uh, ended up uh, being on the phone for a while, and uh, by the time I got off, the kids were just about to riot, so I had to I had to get some stuff uh, in order before I could uh, before I could join. Because uh, as hyped up as they were, they I wouldn't have been able to get far enough away that you guys could hear me. <laughs> so anyway, good, it's good to be here, um, and uh, yeah, this will get on with the show. Lisa said she'll be here in five minutes. Okay, great, great. Yep. Well, you know, you're only a few minutes behind. You really didn't miss much except a couple of my attempts at humor. Oh, that's, that's the whole show, man. 
All right, so um, uh, Ben, uh, I, I don't remember if you read the question or not, but let's make sure Angel knows what it is and then you answer it. Yes, the question is, uh, this is Luke's. Um, it is, whenever I disagree with someone on non-essentials, I always go out of my way to express my disagreement with the utmost respect. And then he uh, references 1 mm. Peter 3.15. And 1 Peter 3.15 reads, uh, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give it a, a defense to everyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And right. I, I interpret meekness and fear in our modern English as, as with, with gentleness and respect. Okay? Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Brother Ben. What do you say? Well, I, I agree with Heather. It, you know, I, I, it's certainly uh, something I aim to do always. Um, but, you know, when, when I disagree with someone, I, and I, I'm kind of focusing mostly on, like, doctrinal issues here. And I'm kind of answering from that perspective. Um especially with given that the reference to verse Peter 3.15, um, that I, it is frustrating sometimes when you hear someone uh, offer a, an interpretation or whatever, and I, you can understand why they, why they see it the way they do. But, um, you know, you know, we're, we can, we're only as good as the information, our, our arguments and our understanding and reasoning is only as good as the information that we have. So we have a limited set of information well, then our and, and it's it's inconclusive. Then our conclusions are going to be inconclusive. And so, um, again, I think that's part of the reason there's so much argumentation in the world about politics or religion or whatever, whatever it may be. It's all about people. I mean, some people are being de deliberately deceptive, uh, and even to themselves, they're lying to themselves. There's plenty of that, uh, and, and I don't want to discount that. But even people who are actually after and, and seeking after the truth and after righteousness. Um, they, they, you know, again, especially new Christians, especially, uh, they have a limited, limited understanding, a limited set of information. And so they can come to certain conclusions very quickly. Um, but, uh, and, and, and so a lot of times you'll hear arguments from people. Uh, in fact, a lot of times what well, most lordshippers, I, I would say majority of them, uh, in my opinion, either are very new Christians or they haven't invested themselves in trying to understand the scripture for themselves. Or frankly, they just don't. They don't really believe, but they it's it's a uh, it's a it's a crutch for them to to use uh, and to, to, so they can feel good about themselves. They can stroke their own ego with it, like they're they're on the side of righteousness. But they don't. Again, they don't understand the Bible. Uh, they don't understand what true righteousness really is. It's you know. So, anyways, um, I, I think my what I'm trying to get to is yes, I, it is frustrating. It so it's hard not to get angry when when you hear someone express. Uh, a false doctor that you know is provably false. Even for me, it, even if it's a non-essential, it's frustrating when I know that you, you like you, like I'm, I'll be confident on something. I'll study like, like crazy, and I've just, you know, I, I've there's so many dots I've connected. It's overwhelming that I, my conclusion is correct. And even if it's, if it's a, a minor doctrine, it is, you know, my first reaction is to get frustrated because, uh, two for two reasons. One is, uh, it's it's uh, it's I think uh, Charles Spurgeon said this. It's irksome to to uh, teach the preach the gospel, and it's the reason it's irksome is like it's it's just it's hard to get people to see your side and and to draw out your case carefully, systematically, and explain everything, and then uh, to hear their you know contention uh, against it and not when they're not really listening and there's all kinds of it's so easy to get frustrated, um, and so in that sense it's easy to get angry and it's easy to get in your flesh and it's easy to act rashly and to uh, kind of get on your high horse and think, oh, I'm right and you're wrong, and it's 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 as black and white as that. To hell with your feelings. To hell with uh, you know, uh, uh, fellowship. Um, you're you're the wrong and I'm in the right, and I've determined that this doctrine is something that's uh, that's uh, that that is a, it, it's an essential, um, or uh, or non-essential, and so. It, you know, we can even agree, it can even disagree on what's essential, what's not essential. You know, so that, that there's a lot of, there's a lot that, uh, there's a lot of, um, it's it's this whole thing. It, it, contending for the faith is is ripe for contention uh, or for um, disagreement and getting in the flesh. And, and I think that's something we need to be very careful about. In that, when we do um, hear something that we think is incorrect, that we take the time to really understand what the person's saying. I think that's critical. 
to understand, okay, what, what are you really saying? And and let's hear your argumentation for it. What, what, what scripture can you bring to bear to support that argument? And then both sides uh, do the same. They, 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 they fully hear each other out, fully explain, uh, they'll bring scriptures to bear that could pro prove it or make their case. And then really think up the ramifications of what both sides are saying. So like, if this is true, then this is true, you know? And so uh, show how, you know, the, the, the pros and cons of both sides and ways the pros and cons of both sides and see where, you know, heresy always begets heresy. And so that's one thing. It, that's why I love the Bible so much is that it, it, because it's true, it can't lead to false conclusions. It can't lead to heresy. Truth always, uh, you know, only always yields truth. The fruit of truth is truth. The tr the the fruit of falsehood is falsehood. And so that's why I think it's important to hear each other out, make each other's case, and draw conclusions, and really, you know, draw out the ramifications of both sides so that we can expose one side as being right or wrong. So I think it's something I aim to do, but uh, it, I'm definitely a work in progress in that respect. Okay, thank you. All right, so Angel, I, you must understand the question now. So what do you say? Yes. Um, I would say it's mo mostly true. I think um, I'm better about this um, uh, now than I was when I was younger. I was very, um, very, I mean, I wasn't, you know, worried about scripture back then, but just as a lost person, very uh, uh, opinionated, but in like, I, I was very rude. I had I had no qualms whatsoever about uh, offending somebody when I thought that their opinion was stupid, and um, I uh, I don't know. Like I I was always frustrated with people because I felt that they weren't um, curious enough or inquisitive enough or, or thoughtful enough, and so I kind of just generally just like looked down on people. Uh, rarely did you know? Rarely did I feel like somebody was my my equal. And so I was real, just a, a snot about things when, it, you know, when it came to anything I was opinionated on. And um, luckily I grew out of that prior to be <laughs> really prior to becoming a believer. Um, I know sometimes if I'm speaking in generalities, uh, not speaking about a person specifically, but just in generalities, I'll still get kind of that attitude when I'm talking about something I don't agree with. But, um, but generally, like if I'm actually dealing with somebody uh, that I, you know, like a brother, for instance, um, I, uh, I mean, a lot of times I, I now I, I don't even feel the need to, to let them know I disagree. You know, I mean, I'm not gonna tell them I agree either, but you know, unless it, it's actually like a one-on-one -on -one conversation and you know it's it's pertinent to let them know. I don't even. I used to always feel the need to interject that, like just to let somebody know where I stood, just just because. But God's really humbled me about a lot of things, um, and uh, you, you know, even on matters of uh, of non-essential doctrine which I, I started out a bit more haughty uh, as a brand new believer than I am now because I've realized I was wrong about, you know, several things. Um, and, I, you know, I've, I've realized that uh, there are plenty of things I, I still don't understand that I haven't studied enough and that I can't just go on, oh, but I have this, you know, I just, I just have a gut feeling that this is right or whatever. Like I, like I, you know, as a, as a brand new believer, a lot of it was, um, you know, I would get these feelings and this, you know, I'd, I'd kind of get carried away with things. And then, and then, you know, the, I had to learn that that's not always the, uh, <laughs> the best measure of, of whether something's correct or not. So, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues that I guess a lot of people are passionate about one way or the other that I've kind of taken an agnostic uh, stance on because I, uh, all I care about is that I can see where the other person gets what you know their conclusion like like if somebody walks me through their thought process where they got this and um and why they why they look at it this way they have my respect and i'm not going to um you know especially if it's stuff that you know i, I can't really tell them you know why some of their points are are wrong or give them a better explanation even if i don't agree you know i'm not gonna i'm not going to be uh uh, dogmatic in, in those instances. I, I just, I just, I tend to like to know that somebody honestly, you know, re really feels like what they believe it, um, makes sense and that they don't really know how to come to another conclusion. Um, I, when I tend to kind of get disrespectful is when I think somebody uh, knows that they have a lot of um, missing pieces, you know, in their argumentation and, uh, 
and and, and they're, they're they dodge them or they gloss over them and and and, and I start to think that there's some sort of uh, alter, not ulterior motive necessarily where they're intentionally lying but just maybe an emotional motive for what they believe or or whatever um, then I, I you know that, that gets irritating to me because um, I you know I just I just that maybe that's just a pet peeve of mine but even in that case I find things that I'm not uh, I'm not certain on one way or the other and um, I just try to, uh, to to have respect especially for people that um, that I do respect that I that I that I that I deem to be you know good people who have um, their hearts in the right place for whatever they believe um, and I you know one of the things that I have become less uh, less certain about is, you know, the, the rapture timing. Um, I'm almost entirely agnostic about that. Uh, and then a lot of people, I, I know more people, more people than not that are one way or the other. I don't know a whole lot of people that just don't know, but that's, that's, that's where I'm at. Um, I try to very much defer, uh, to the respect I have for people I fellowship with. And, um, and I actually weigh that in to, uh, to how I look at things. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm still a babe as far as I'm concerned. And also, um, being right isn't nearly as, as, as enticing, um, a motive for me as it, as it was when I was younger. So, um, uh, I just really, I'm just still trying to, there's certain things I think a lot of us just don't really have a, a really good grasp on, but, you know, we feel one way or the other and, and, you know, and in those in those uh, instances, I think, you know, a lot of people in the church in general could could use a lot more humility and uh, and maybe having a more agnostic perspective on certain very controversial doctrinal issues, because it certainly makes for a more peaceable uh, coexistence, at least in my, in my experience. So, uh, but so that's why I say uh, I think mostly true. That's what I said. It's snowing, guys. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, Brother Ben, well, I'd like you to repeat the question for Sister Lisa. But Lisa, would you like to say hello to everybody? Hey, Lisa. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? I knew. I said I knew it. As soon as Brother Luke goes to <laughs> call on me, I had to sneeze just before the mic. So <laughs> I'm recovering from my sneeze. But how is everyone? How are you doing? Oh, glad you're here. I do hear yeah. I'm on mute so my birdies don't drown you up. It's kind of funny because uh, I had told Sister Victoria through a text just prior to uh, lying down. I said, oh, I'm going to lie down. I'm going to catch a nap before the broadcast. I'm really tired right now, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lie down. And I put on some ambient noise, which was a waterfall in the background. So when my alarm went off for the broadcast, I'm sorry. I didn't hear it. I think I was either snoring too loud or the waterfall was too loud. I'm not sure which, but I did, I'm sorry. I did not hear it. So I woke up like 15 minutes late and I was oh. like, oh no. You need to get Alarmy. I have this app called Alarmy and it lets you set alarms that are incredibly obnoxious and horrible and horrific and they traumatized my cats. Uh, they've been locked in the room while they're growing off and uh, before and um, I, and they also will have it to where you can you have to do math problems and stuff like that to turn it off. Oh and my it used goodness. To be where, yeah, I have to use that and it used to be where you couldn't even turn your phone off when it was going off. I think my phone's got like memory full because now I can and did today turned my phone off uh, while my alarm was going off, which is not good. It ended up bad. It's way too late. But uh, just a tip for everybody, alarm me. That's a really good app if you're a heavy sleeper who sleeps through your alarm. You can't sleep through those alarms. Well, I, I'd like to say that, uh, Lisa, we're <laughs> glad you made it, even though you, you were uh, late. But uh, uh, you did uh, say you're sorry. So I, I think we have true repentance. I think like we have real contrition. So I'm going to suggest that we forgive you. And uh, at the end of the program, we'll tell you how many Hail Marys you must say. I don't think you want to say that, Brother Luke. Somebody probably just captured that and they're going to do a loop <laughs> on you. Uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the first time they try to do something <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I, have you listened enough to know what the question is? Yes, but go ahead and repeat it for, okay, uh, for ahead, posterity. Then. All right. The uh, question is, um, 
Uh, whenever I disagree with someone on non-essentials, I always go out of my way to express my disagreement with the utmost respect. And Luke references uh, 1 Peter 3.15, where it, uh, Peter talks about uh, always have a, a reasoning, a reason for the hope that is in you uh, and expressing it with uh, meekness and fear. I can't remember the exact wording. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I wasn't through laughing quite yet. But yeah, I got the question. Thank you so much. I was going to use Sister Angel's excuse because I thought it was a good excuse, but I just didn't know how to flip it for the joke. So I just left it alone. As she was saying, <laughs> her, her children, she was on the phone for a really long time. By the time she got off, the children were, what well, did you say, ready to, to commit mutiny or what was it? A, a riot. They were riot. A riot. About to riot. A riot. Yeah. But I didn't know how to flip it, so I left it alone. But uh, <laughs> I um, get a parakeet, you'll have an excuse. <laughs> you get that parakeet. Not gonna let up on it. Okay. No, I heard Ben's explanation, so I thought I would just say no and leave it right there. Um, <laughs> messed with you guys. I'm sorry. I'm in a playful mood this evening because I got enough sleep. When I get enough sleep, I'm I'm dangerous. Uh, <laughs> no. I wish I could say that I always did. There's times I hear people. When I'm listening to broadcasts or stuff, I tend to stream it to my TV. So I'll be sitting here watching and listening, and I'll hear them butcher uh, a scripture, and I'm just like, oh, no, no, you didn't just do that. And, and you know, I'll get fighting mad because I know that people are listening. And I think it's probably not even so much what, they're, what they think about it or, or, or saying that I get frustrated. It's the fact that they're teaching it to other people that irritates irritates me uh, and I'm sure I've made people equally as irritated at times so but uh you know I was thinking about the the Galatians 5 where it talks about the fruit of the spirit and what that is and it, you know I would like to say I'm always <laughs> I'm always that way uh, I try very hard one of the things that um I have had to learn and really work on was that you know when you how do you approach somebody and you know, even talk about what it is that you're disagreeing about when you might be very passionate against what it is that they are actually holding a position with. And uh, the only way I, that I really learned to begin how to do that was like when I would try to have to explain things to my grandmother, who was either at the time in her 80s or 90s, and she just did not understand certain things. And I had to be patient. And, and kind and you know you wouldn't attack your 90 year old grandmother when she didn't understand or didn't agree with you and so that helped me a lot once I started uh, seeing things that way uh, or like if you had a small child and they didn't understand and you were trying to explain it or maybe they were being really um, you know stubborn or obstinate or cross and you have to be patient. So uh, that one is something that I have worked on through the years. I think I've gotten better at to say that I'm perfect. No, I wouldn't, wouldn't say that, uh, especially when it's contending over the gospel, because I know that it's not a game and it's very important and it's critical. But I also understand that I had to understand, too, that God is bigger than 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 that. And it. <laughs> He didn't slide down a lightning bolt on folk that uh, when they make mistakes or they're wrong and all these different things, you know, a lot of people have continued for many years in what we might all consider at one time in a, a wrong ideology or doctrine or whatever. And yet he's given them span to come to proper understanding, however long that is. So once I started realizing, hey, he's, he, you know, he's bigger than uh, than me and he can handle it and he can take it and he ain't worried about it. We just contend for the faith. We disseminate what we believe to be the truth. We try to explain ourselves in love. If you can't, oh, no, my computer's trying to give me a restart notice. Please don't. Uh, then you you do the best you can. If you have to note and avoid, then you're going to note and avoid. But um, the dividing line for me is when, when people... Uh, come against the, the simplicity of the gospel. And then they start adding all these things to muddy up the waters of the gospel of grace. And, and that's when I really probably am not going to have anything more to do with them because, especially after they've been admonished the way the Bible says, 
uh, then, you know, no, I'm not going to not going to fool with that. It's just no, no void. And and then if you need to explain why you divide it, explain why you divide it. OK, uh, I had to leave this person alone because they hold to this view. And I believe this is doctrinal error. Uh, while I I can't judge them to damnation, I'm not going to continue fellowship with them. So um, and that's difficult and we don't want to do that. But in the same way, when we're, we're showed in the scriptures that we have our brothers and or sisters in Christ. Then you have people who we know that are agents that have sent in by the devil. The Lord's going to judge all of that. So we're just supposed to note and void because ultimately that's all we can do. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, you're going to end up with a ungodly inquisition. So I hope I didn't ramble too much because, again, I'm still <laughs> I'm still I should have did a math problem before I began because my my brain was a little fogged out. Um having just woken up rushing, trying to get uh, here. And again, I apologize to everyone. This is critically important to me, but I really did have some ambient noise going that was louder than my alarm. So you have my a thousand pardons, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess, has everybody answered be besides me? Didn't miss anybody, right? Well, um, I especially liked your answer, Lisa. Um, I'm gonna elaborate a little bit more on some of the points that you made. But first, uh, uh, it's interesting in the chat room, the reaction to this question, um, it, uh, let me see, several people were, uh, oh, here's one, um, God Soldier Dylan says, um, why are the questions so extremely personal? Um, that same kind of point was made by two or three other people earlier. If you scroll up, you'll find those. Um, so, um, well, let me just say first that uh, I wrote the question. And if you if you were to go back through all of our Friday night programs, you'll see that I've written many questions that uh, are kind of personal. It's not personal to you individually. I'm not I'm not uh, uh, thinking. I don't have any individual in mind. I'm not trying to uh, expose any any individual regarding this particular issue, uh, but it, it should be personal. I want it to be personal. I want us to think about: Are we? How are we dealing with this particular? Uh, it's a problem, I think. Uh, my I answered the question <clears throat> certainly true, and of course I might be violating my own rule because you know it says always and. Uh, uh, I, I probably don't always, but I almost always, because this is something that I believe in so much and, and, and really realize. For me, I've come to believe that this is one of the most important things. If you want to uh, have fellowship and friendship and relationships, this is something we have to master. So I worked at it. It's something always in the front of my mind in conversations. And uh, I, I think that the point that you made, Lisa, about your grandmother and a small child, that is the key to this. Uh, if, if you were talking to somebody that you really loved, and let's say that you love this person and, and you knew them so well that you knew that they're, they're kind of very sensitive, their feelings could get hurt very easily, and you love them so much you would never want to hurt their feelings. I think that if you want, needed to say you disagreed with them about something, you would go out of your way to express the disagreement though, as politely as you possibly could. And I, I, I think that's a, the proper way for us to, to deal with each other all the time. Uh, now, uh, there are other people who made some comments about, well, uh, in the panel and in the chat room, of, well, it depends on what essentials are. Um, well, here, well, I'm asking the question and we are, in the context presently of Church of the Eternally Secure. And if you don't already know, I, I think most of the people here are, have been with us for a long time. We, we've been uh, functioning as a church program for three years now. Uh, and and uh, we have uh, waved this banner uh, with this creed, uh, unity, liberty, charity, and unity in essentials liberty in non-essentials, charity or love in all things. So uh, we, 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 it does beg the question, well, if you have to be have unity in essentials, you have to 
state and agree what the essentials are. And we've, we've said all along and asked everybody, not only asked, but said, we must agree. We must agree that these three things are essential. Uh, we are dogmatic. When dogma means that, that you can't, you can't allow a disagreement. You, we insist that we agree on this. That's a dogma. <clears throat> and our dogmas or essentials are that uh, Jesus is God, not merely a prophet or a man, but he's God Almighty. Uh, that we, uh, another dogma is that uh, salvation is by faith alone without any works required. And the third dogma is that uh, eternal security is, is the gospel. We, we must agree that we cannot lose our salvation for any reason. Um, so those are the dogmas of church of eternally secure. And the fourth dogma, I like to say it this way, there can never be a fourth dogma. Um, because every time you form a dogma, what you're doing is saying that um, if you don't agree with this, you're not welcome. And that's what we're saying. We, I'm not, if someone disagrees with our essentials, they're welcome to be here. And, and uh, we hope that they can learn and finally agree with us. But they're not welcome in the church program to argue against the essential doctrines of Christianity. If someone comes in here and starts saying that, no, faith and works, if you don't have works, you're not saved. We don't allow that to be taught here. So um, every time you form a dogma, you're uh, basically taking a slice of the population and saying, uh, because of that belief, you're, you're, uh, you cannot be part of our program. If it, in other words, if someone said, well, you have to also um, agree that um, the, um, let's say that uh, the Nephilim are the result of angels having sex with women. Uh, and you say, if you, if you try to impose that dogma and say, we all have to agree on that. Well, we'd say, no, you, you can't, you, you can't impose an, any more dogmas. Uh, everything else is there's liberty. We're free to disagree. So that now, now the question is, okay, if, if the time comes and we disagree on something, which is quite often, uh, how do we go about disagreeing? And, and there's a couple of things that, uh, I've tried to get across to people when, when I see them going wrong is that uh, you've probably noticed that um, uh, all in the past when Matthias was here and Daniel and uh, Renee and me, and, uh, and then we had new people join us. Uh, uh, oftentimes on Sundays and uh, a question comes up and we disagree. Uh, but we always disagreed in a way where we were polite to each other and we stated our disagreement, but, and then um, uh, this is, uh, uh, anybody else is allowed to state, well, okay, I'm interested in hearing more about your position. I'm, I'd like to understand it better, but this is how I see it. So in other words, that's a diplomatic way of saying, I don't agree, and, and this is what I believe. So what we want uh, done is that we want uh, everybody to be comfortable that they, everybody's free to express a dissenting viewpoint without feeling that they're, they're, they're muzzled, they're, and they're, they're not allowed to, to disagree. But also, um, no one expresses their viewpoint in a condescending way. Uh, uh, so that, uh, because who wants to be condescended to? That's a, it's very uh, insulting and rude to condescend and act like your position is kind of stupid, you know? So um, what, what we really say is that express a different viewpoint, but then leave it at that. We're not going to go back and forth. Let's say we disagree on something. And then I say, well, this is my position. And then you say, well, what about this? And I say, well, what about that? And then we go back and back in an attempt to win the argument. What we're trying to do is saying we want to say everybody express your viewpoint so that everybody has all the possible viewpoints to consider. And then we leave it at that. We don't argue and, and, and turn it into a, 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 a debate where we're seeking to try to prove the others wrong and be the winner. So that's where we go too far with the thing. Uh, but when people uh, are really blunt and, and will make a, a comment that is disagreeing, but they're not trying to be polite, they're not trying to be gentle and meek and, and uh, uh, 
courteous and they, they just bluntly state something like uh, uh, that, that's a, oh, especially if they say it like that's a heresy. Uh, well, first of all, um, it's very egotistical for someone to believe that they're right about everything, you know, whatever it, whatever it is. I mean, I have uh, a lot of uh, theology. Uh, I have a, uh, a strong opinion, a medium opinion, and, a, and a, a weak opinion where, okay, this is what I think when I'm not so confident. And in other things, I'm quite confident. But I certainly am not egotistical enough to say or to think even that I'm, I'm absolutely right all the time. I know I've been wrong in the past. I'm probably still wrong about some things now. So we need to realize that and, uh, and, uh, and be, have humility instead of egotism. Um, okay, I guess those are the, the points. But the reason I, I brought it up is because in, in our conversations in, in the, uh, on the panels and in the chat rooms, we've been very good at this. Uh, but sometimes I see that we fail. And, and if, if we fail, I think we need to talk about it. Say, hey, wait a second, you're... You're, uh, there are some people that are not going out of their way to be polite, and and it, and it can get a little bit ugly. It can it's easy to get carried away. If one person does it, then the other person will do it back, but even intensify it, and it gets worse, worse, and builds. So uh, it's something that it can be done because I believe I've succeeded in doing it for the most part, but it's something you have to keep in your mind and you have to make an effort to develop it. It's a virtue to be able to disagree, but be polite, go out of your way to be as polite, just like it's your grandmother or a child. And that they're, you don't, you certainly want to want to hurt their feelings and offend them or make them feel stupid. You try to disagree in the nicest way you possibly could. Okay, so now let's uh, see if anybody has any follow-ups to this. Uh, who would like to go? Okay, I guess. Sorry, you know, I did want to. I'm slow to the mic. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, I'm working on my draw there. Uh, no, I just wanted to reiterate um, that, yeah, that's, it's like that whole phrase, patience is a virtue. Uh, this is something, though, that when when you have to work on something, it's a little bit more than a virtue. Because a virtue, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe Sister Angel can help me. She seems to know just about everything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna defer and see if she or Ben, uh, or Luke, or Heather. Yeah. Uh, if if a virtue is something that is cultivated. Or that one already inherently possesses. I, that word, I, I'm gonna have to research that. I don't a little know bit if further. there's a distinction. I don't know if there's a if there's a distinction but inherently with the word mm. whether or not it's some it has to be something you've worked at or I, I don't think virtue implies something you were innately uh, gifted with. I think yeah. it, but 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 you know because you know it's like a character trait, right? But some right. character traits are yeah. developed, well, others are. I would think that a, a, a virtue could be developed or you might be just gifted that it's just naturally part of your personality. Uh, but uh, uh, when I say virtue, I, I'm, I'm assuming that, okay, I've already either do it naturally or I made an attempt to develop it. And now, now that I've, I've succeeded, it's, I, I have mm -hmm. this. Virtue. Okay. All yeah. right. So whether it is inherent and or, a learned or trained behavior. Either way, it is it is something that's being exhibited upon uh, the person having mastered or having it. So either way, whichever way it comes. So we see that the Bible says like the fruit of the Spirit. So then we have to allow this, the Holy Spirit that when we blow it, let's just own it, when we blow it, um, that we have to, one, repent, which is change our mind. We have to own our blowing it, <laughs> which is to recognize the recognition of, I blew it. Now what do I do about it? I blew it. Can I repair the damage that may have been done? Hopefully there wasn't damage done. And then, you know, it's, it's this, that's that whole progression. I tell you what, you do that enough times, you don't want to step in it anymore. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, uh, if I did lose me, how many times am I going to be embarrassed by 
my uncontrolled outbursts or my uncontrolled temper or my, you know what, you know what I mean? It's like, it will force you to have to correct. When you, when you repent, you get tired of having to go around the same mulberry bush. So then how do I learn how to not do that again? How do I not step in that again? So, uh, it, you know, I'm like, don't beat yourself up. You know, if you've done it, we've all made those mistakes. It's like, okay, so what do I do about it? That's why I say you have a take a seat moment where you go back and self-examination in this Christian life is key. It, it's like you have to have it or you're just going to run around being a little minor psychopath. And that's not the spirit of the Lord. We have to sit down and examine ourselves and go, did, did, did I go a little too far this way or that? And allow the Holy Spirit to talk. And then you got to be quiet and listen. <laughs> be still and know that he's God. You got, you know, you seek the Lord about things, and it's time to be quiet so you can hear his answer. So we have to constantly be doing that. And when you're led by the Spirit, you're paying attention to that. You want to, hey Lord, what, what do you have to say to me today? What do I need to check? What do I need to reconcile? Do I need to make amends? Do I need to go back and say something to somebody because maybe I was a little too coarse or too callous or uh, a little too self-righteous or whatever. And that's when, you know, the Lord really begins to work with you. So, you know, I, I think that when we examine things like this and when we're cognizant of things like this, and like Brother Luke said, if we're having a discussion with somebody and we know that we don't agree already, then we have to keep that in the, the forefront of our minds that, hey, I love this brother or sister in Christ. I don't want to injure them. I don't want to hurt them. How do I answer this question? I'll tell you what, there's even times I've asked the Lord, Lord, do I say something now or later? And there's times he said now, and there's other times he said later. <laughs> so uh, that's the other thing is to check with the Lord before you even open your mouth. Should I say something right now? Because even though you might be 100% right, now is not the time to say it. It might be later when it can be received. So that that's why being led by the spirit is so critically important. And, and when you you begin to walk in the spirit, you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh, which may just be desire. The lust of the flesh can be, I'm going to make my point and I'm going to be right. Well, maybe you did, but did you leave wounded bodies everywhere? So this, this is the thing that we're working out in our salvation with fear and trembling and in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And when we blow it, we just need to own it. We'll go back and correct ourselves and and go forward there. And then and if you didn't, uh, then then praise the Lord. But it should never be steeped in self-righteousness because whatever we're doing, we're doing by the grace of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. OK. Uh, all right. Who wants to say more about this? Anyone? Um, I, I do. Um, I think that for me, the part of the question that stood out the most was that we're talking about non-essentials. If we're talking about salvation, doctrine, Jesus, Christ alone, faith alone, Christ alone, um, grace alone. Sorry, I got that out of order. But anyway, um, if we're talking about the essential points, then yes, absolutely. I will go out of my way to, to correct that in a loving, gentle way. But if we're talking about other things that are not essential to salvation, then there, there is just so many divisions in the body of Christ as it is that I hesitate to ruffle any feathers and cause any division. I, I feel I'm a pacifist and I feel that my role is to draw people together under one Christ in love. Um, so as for non-essentials and that, that was the part of the question that stood out, like I said to me for non-essentials, I don't, I don't see the wisdom in pushing my, my, even in a gentle, loving way, pushing my understanding of what a verse says, um, because it can very easily lead to divisions. Let me, uh, since we keep on bringing up a non-essential as the a part of this, uh, I did put it in the qu question, but uh, I, I will expand it to um, even essentials in, in this respect. Uh, on, on essentials, we're going to be dogmatic, 
we're, we're not going to allow uh, the liberty to, okay, you can disagree. You don't have to agree that Jesus is God. And you're welcome to teach that here in the congregation because you're free to disagree on that. No, we're going to be dogmatic and say, no, we, we, we will not allow that to be taught here. It's a damnable heresy. It's, uh, it's that important. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we uh, have to um, uh, disagree with them and be rude, get angry. We should still apply the, the idea that oh, let's still try to disagree, but be polite about it, uh, I, regardless whether it's essential or non-essential, I, I would say. And the difference in essentials is that we, we have to be dogmatic and, and, and say you're not free to teach that here. Uh, all right. Any more from Ben? I'm surprised you don't have more to say about this. Well, I, 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 well a couple things I was going to add. Well, actually, a couple things. So, um, hey, Steve, great to have you. Um, um, the a couple things. What I meant about when I called out not essentials, you know, yeah, we on the surface, I think we can all agree what the essentials are. But when you really draw it out, it, it's sometimes difficult to say, okay, you know, we can make a statement like faith alone, Christ alone, uh, and things like that. But okay, like for example, with the recent uh, departure we had, they were teaching that a true believer will believe and perpetually believe and never doubt. And if they ever do doubt, then they weren't saved. Well, that consist technically is consistent with uh, faith alone and Christ alone. But again, when you draw it out and you turn, you know, I think that's why I think it's important to hear both sides and uh, understand what exactly what each, each person's saying and weigh the pros and cons and really, really trace out exactly where the ramifications of what they're teaching. And if it's false, it'll be proven false. And it'll it'll show that it's destructive, uh, which I think we did. Um, and so for that reason, I think it's it, again it's important that we give th that that time to make sure we understand both sides and make sure that we both understand what where the dr disagreement is. Otherwise, it's just going to be constantly back and forth. That's how arguments don't die. Is that people uh, t typically how they don't die is when people you know keep up like oh well I, I you didn't hear me say this or you didn't hear me say that and they keep on trying to pile on to it. Um, and so I think it's important to let let it all you know confront it up front, confront it you know at the first, and um, get it all out in the open, and then basically everyone execute their judgment or their statement on it. Uh, with regards to virtue and, and that being a uh, intrinsic trait, um, I mean that could be some somewhat of an intrinsic trait, but I think in the Bible when it it basically means moral excellence, like uh, like you have uh, you've you've uh, mastered. Or you know, when I say master, I say that loosely. But you've you've got control over your ba more baser passions and lusts. So you're not you're, you're less likely to um, you know go out, have an outburst of wrath. Um, you know, you ex exercise the self control uh, that you were mentioning before, Lisa. And again, I I I'd like I think uh, one reason I know it's not I don't think it's intrinsic to the you know human nature is. Uh, it's something that Peter exhorts people, uh, believers to do. At, so after it's it First Peter or Second Peter one, after he uh, confirms and and uh, uh, confirms that they're born again, he basically says, "Because you're born again, essentially, for this very reason, giving all diligence that means you something we need to work at, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self control, self control to perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love." For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither, neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he's been cleansed for his, from his old sins. So again, if, if someone doesn't have these traits, they are, you know, they're they're forgetting that they've been born again and who they are. They for, they're not walking out their status. Uh, as a son of God who's perfected forever, um, and should not, you know he should no longer be w walking in the old man. Yes, we all again. I, I just I'm, he, I think he's speaking more characteristically, you know, as a as a general pattern, not you know like you'll never do these things. It's just a you know we should be on the path of growth. We should be getting better. Uh, and I think Luke, you've expressed this before, and I certainly believe this is that you're either growing in Christ or you're uh, or you're dying. You know, it, it's life or death. There's no in between. Um, I, I I don't I just don't think that the, the human nature is not that way. The sin nature is not that way. You're either growing through the spirit or the sin nature is just going to grow more corrupt, as as even Peter says. 
So, um, yeah, I just want to mention that virtue is a kind of basically means moral excellence. Okay, thank you. Uh, you made uh, uh, two points that uh, I want to I need to reply to. Um, the um, I forgot the second one now, but uh, uh, the you said that uh, the reason for this um, schism uh, what over was that uh, some were teaching that you you must persevere in your faith. Your faith cannot wane or fail, uh, or you're not really saved. We we all know if you've been here long enough, you know we all know that was an issue, and and, and finally there was a division over that. Uh, but uh, I do believe that it was a violation of uh, the core doctrines, and that for a long time uh, that was the reason that we were tolerating it because uh, we couldn't really uh, cl claim that, hey, you're violating any of the three core doctrines. But I came to realize that one, if a person is teaching that you must uh, seek, seeking is a necessity that, that precludes getting saved, seeking and you must study. And, uh, and in order, you have to study and study. And, and then when you've learned enough, at that point, maybe you'll have, you'll have the faith and, and you'll get saved. Uh, well, the Bible says, study, show yourself approved, a workman. So we can see that studying is a, is a work. So studying and, and seeking, uh, we could easily conclude that we're at, we're, you're saying faith plus work. But what about persisting in your faith? Is that a work? Uh, that is a Calvinist doctrine. It's the fifth point of, of uh, TULIP, and that is the perseverance in good works and in the faith. So uh, in Calvinism, they say that if you don't persevere by continuing to do good works and getting sin out of your life, you're not saved. And if you don't persevere with your faith, if your faith fails, you're not saved. So what they're doing is they're putting the onus on you instead of it's Jesus and the cross plus nothing. Okay, we believe in Jesus and what he accomplished for us on the cross plus nothing, okay? But if we say that we have to persist or persevere with our faith, then it's not on Jesus to save us and keep us saved. It's up to us because we've got to persevere and keep our faith. So that's why I believe it was a violation uh, and it, it became a, really a, a faith plus works system. Okay, Steve, I'm sorry you had to wait so long uh, to, before we could acknowledge you and uh, I am glad you could make it. Uh, why don't you say hello to everybody first? And have you been able to follow along and you know what the question is? Um, I do know what the question is. I haven't, I've been following along since I got on. I was on the phone oh. earlier. So Okay. All right. So um, go ahead and just say hi and then, and then answer the question unless you need the question repeated. Um, uh, da, da, da. Hello, everybody. Uh, glad to be here. Um, and the question was, let me see if I can grab it here real quick. Um, I paraphrase. I always it. try to, uh, I guess it's something like I always try to disagree with someone on non-essentials with the utmost respect. Um, and I guess that's the question. Um, yeah. And I would say, yeah, I try to. Uh, I don't, I'm sure I don't succeed sometimes. And, but I think that's uh, exceptionally important uh, because uh, there's a lot of people that don't want anything to do with Christianity because of the arguments and fights among so-called believers, people that believe we're supposed to love each other. And we talk about the love of Jesus, and a lot of times people don't see it. And, uh, there, you know, I can say that for the most part, I've been able to have conversations more often with those that are not believers, either atheists or just agnostic people far better sometimes than believers because I respect them and they, uh, and they actually 
uh, and they actually can tell that I'm not trying to force them to believe what I believe. And I answer questions as they bring them up and I don't try to give patsy answers. Um, and I think the same goes for any type of discussion, whether it's within those that claim the name of Christ or not. Um, but I would say especially so between believers so that we show love to each other. That's our first duty really is to show love to each other and let that love shine out from us. Um, and if you don't respect each other, even if we have opposing points of view, then the people that aren't saved aren't, you know, it discourages a lot of people. It discourages me from wanting to be around Christians sometimes or those that claim to be Christ, you know, believers, because you get into arguments and, you know, it's like, uh, so that's, that's, that's really tough sometimes. And I know I've been guilty of times where I wasn't respectful of people's beliefs. And that's what we should be. We should be giving each other the most respect and willing to listen and being honest about whether we have the right answer or not, or whether we're not sure about an answer or, you know, uh, this is what I believe, but I can't account for X, Y, and Z, or I'll try to get back to you on that, you know? Um, but, uh, as far as it comes down to the gospel, um, that's, that's where I can still politely disagree and disagree wholeheartedly. And, um, you know, you know, I had to walk away from, you know, All right, so we're gonna some be friendships looking... because we couldn't agree. I had one buddy of mine that um, went down that the Lordship Road for a long time and, you know, finally realized I was right <laughs> somehow about it being by grace alone and you know, came back around. We've had many good conversations. So um, the respect thing is a big thing for me uh, because I don't know of any other way to show you're not loving than to be disrespectful. Um, it's one thing to disagree, and it's a whole other thing to... Uh, to, to leave someone feeling like you think you're better than them or that their opinion isn't worth the time to listen. Um, and a lot of people, especially those that aren't saved, a lot of their, it's either, it's either anger based towards God, which is usually based in, in hurt and something bad that's happened or they don't understand things. And I just try to answer respectfully, understanding where they're coming from. That's a big deal to me. Um, but yeah, even in the Christian community, it can be pretty bad. And I avoid certain topics because I know they can be almost instantly divisive. Um, you know, like, uh, the, the state of the lost after they die, the, you know, the, all, all that stuff, the, the, uh, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Are they for today or are they not? Um, all kinds of issues that can be divisive when the most important thing in all of this to me is the gospel. Um, and if someone perverts it, I will stand against it and I will do so as best I can to be lovingly about it. Um, and 
name calling and all that is certainly not appropriate in any of that situation. Um, you know, sometimes you just have to walk away from people. If you can't get along, try another, a completely other topic <laughs> to try to build some more trust and respect, especially with people you don't know. And I find it very easy to get into the wrong place headspace wise when you're doing it online on trying to have a discussion with just text or something like that. Um, so I avoid that for the most part. Um, but yeah, I think that's extremely important to always be respectful. You can disagree and be respectful and still listen to somebody else's opinion or, or whatnot. Sometimes you just, if you can't, then the most loving thing to do is to is to disagree and walk away and pray for them and hope that God sends someone in their life that has a better way or better approach that will work for them. So that's what I would say. Always bring prayer into it and do the best you can. And if you can't, Best thing you can do, like many of our mothers taught us, if you got nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. So, okay. thanks. Amen. Uh, the um, the idea you brought there at the end about uh, uh, maybe somebody else will come later, and and maybe they will have the right uh, chemistry. Maybe sometimes it could be a simple matter of a personality clash. So hopefully somebody will come later and um, build on what we did. We planted, we watered, but uh, it didn't spring to life yet. But the, the problem is, though, that if, if someone comes later and, and they find that the person's heart is hardened against Christ because the person was so rude and belligerent and obnoxious. I mean, there's a lot of street preachers I've known like that. And you, everybody here can probably think of some people that they're not drawing people to Christ. Uh, the, the, the reaction someone has really is, wow, if that's what a Christian is, I don't ever want to be one. So, um, yeah, we want to be sure that uh, when, we, when we are finished talking to them, that at, that at least that they're not turned off on on uh, Jesus because we did such a, a we were rude we were condescending or anything like that we we but whether we when we disagreed we they knew that we were doing it lovingly and as politely as possible I think that the highlight of, of the conversation so far is the the point that Lisa made and I, so it's worth repeating for everybody that let's just try to remember that. Um, Whoever we're talking to, whether it's uh, verbal or whether it's in the chat room, um, if we're going to disagree, uh, pretend it's your grandmother or somebody you love so much, and you would, you, you, the last thing in the world you'd ever want to do is offend them or hurt their feelings, but you, you need to disagree. You're going to try to be as polite and diplomatic about it as possible. That's something that we can we can all try to do better. All right, any more from anyone? 